Hi everyone, I'm happy to be here tonight with you guys. My name is Sam and I'm also known as Color Made Happy. Um, as you can see, I love color. It's all behind me. Uh, so we're going to be doing graduation caps and um, this is the one that we're going to be doing tonight and I'm going to give you some ideas. Um, I want you to make this what you want it to be though. So I will show you the colors and the ideas that I'm doing. but. Um, it, I want you to have fun and choose the colors and the designs that you want to do. I'm just going to give you guys some ideas. Um, I'm going to be using uh, Artist Loft acrylic paint. I love this paint. Um, it goes on just really well. It's easy to paint with. Um, if you don't have a graduation cap, you can do this design on a wood slice. You can do it on a piece of paper. Um, we'll just get to it. So um, Lindsay, if you want to go top down, view we'll get started um so my cap that i got um has a tassel on i think some of them come and you can detach them um so i'm just going to cut mine off but i wanted to show you if you are working with your tassel and you don't want to cut it off like i'm going to do with mine i would just get a little bottle or a little cup and set it up above that way we can paint around it and not get any paint on it um but because i'm gonna be doing a demonstration for you guys. I'm just gonna cut mine off and set it to the side. Uh, so I am working with a black graduation cap. You might be working with um, one that's white or a different color. So I'm gonna use a piece of chalk. I don't know if you have it. If you don't, um, a pencil will work. Um, we're gonna just outline part of the design first and I'm gonna do it with chalk so you can easily see. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is the book. And we don't need any paint for this. Um, if you don't have anything that you can outline with, you can lightly put some paint on your paintbrush because it's going to get painted, painted over with. Um, but we're going to do just a line up. And this is the top of the book. And why I love working with chalk is because if you make a mistake, it just rubs right, right off. Um, so we're going to go up for the the part of the book. One thing to um, actually I just want you to think about, look at the back of your graduation hat and I would look for where the fastening is and just make sure you're doing it the right way. So I have the fastening right here in the back. Okay, so we're gonna do the book. We're gonna go this way for the page and then we're gonna do another, it's just kind of like a slight little curved line that way. And if I'm going too fast or if you guys have any questions, please let me know. If you want me to go faster, let me know too. And then we're gonna bring a line down and these are just for the pages of the book. And we're gonna go down this way. And then we're gonna go down to the bottom. And like I said, there really is no wrong way to do this. So don't worry about making it perfect. I'm gonna do a little half circle right there. And then we're gonna take, we're gonna come right here and we're gonna go all the way out. You can make it, this is kind of like how much you wanna make the page bent. So if you look here, I did a pretty, pretty big half circle. Um, so we're gonna go up and all the way through. And then on this side, we're gonna go up and all the way through. And we're gonna go back up to the top here and we're gonna just bring the line down. This is like where the pages are gonna be. And all this is gonna get filled in. This is just get, give you an idea of what you're painting um, when you're painting it. And then we're just going to do a line this way and a line this way. And we don't even really have to worry about this is the cover of the book. We're going to paint that later. But if you want to show the lines here, you can just put another little line on the side. This is where the book cover is going to go. Whoops, make that a little bigger. And like I said, all of this is pretty much going to get covered up. But this is just to give you an idea. Anyone have any questions about drawing this? And like I said, we're gonna paint all this. This is just kind of to give you an outline of what the book is. 
I'm gonna take uh, white acrylic paint with graduation caps, at least with mine, you need a lot of paint because it kind of soaks it up. So I would put a ton of paint and we're just gonna fill in the graduation cap right now. Or sorry, we're gonna fill in the book. And it's okay to leave a little bit of space like right by the lines. So if you see here, kind of gonna leave a little space right there. It's just gonna help me because later we're gonna add in some other little details. And the brushes that I'm using, these are all by Artist Loft, um, but I'm using a flat brush. So if you have a flat brush like this, this is a much easier way to cover large areas. And we're just gonna fill it in. There's no exact way to do this. It's just getting it filled in and actually it's, better if it doesn't look completely perfect because it makes the book look a little more antiqued. So we're gonna fill in more of the pages. Is everyone, I'm curious what color graduation caps you guys are painting. Um, if you can let me know in the comments because then that will help me give you guys a few tips if you guys are painting something other than black. I'm just covering it all in. And when you get to the edge right here, right before we get to this line, I'm we're, we're gonna go back in and fill these in better later. This is just to get us started. So I kind of leave a space right there. So I realize that this is gonna be kind of where the book opens, where you can see the pages. So I'm just gonna leave, it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're gonna go back in later with a smaller paintbrush. This is just to pretty much fill in the main bulk of the area. We have one uh, comment for Royal Blue. Oh, Royal Blue, oh, that's cool. So with Royal Blue, um, you know, if white isn't working on your hats, you guys could do, um, you could kind of make it a tan color. You can even make the pages of the book black. So if white's not working for you, um, feel free to use any other color for the pages. Uh, but a tan would look really cool too. And Alexa commented uh, with white. Oh, white, okay. So with white, you could do, um, I have, I know I have this tan color um, that I would do on white, but really you could take any color, maybe add a little bit of um, white to it so it's not super bright. Um, and you can make the pages any color. Actually, I think it would be really cool to have a colorful, colorful book. What are your thoughts if it is maroon? If it's maroon, I think. Um, the white actually will look really good on maroon because it's the light versus the dark. Um, so if you have something, if it's like a dark maroon, I think the white would look really good on it. And we'll just keep going here. Can so, you tell us again what kind of paint you're using? Sure. So I'm using uh, Artist Loft. It's acrylic paint. So any acrylic paint will work, but I love Artist Loft. It's just, it's very thick. And when you're covering um, material, I use it actually, I've been painting um, maps that I have, that we've been wearing. Um, I use it I, on my jeans. It actually works really well um, for painting jeans or jean jackets, um, but I love that Artist Loft's acrylic paint. Uh, some acrylic paints are a little bit watery, but I've noticed with Artist Loft that they are very thick and creamy. Um, so it, they're very easy to work with. Um, and like I said, they are great on different types of materials. I also use them on uh, wood slices. So I was telling people, um, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I don't know if anyone's here from there, but I said, even if you're not graduating, you can do this design on like a wood slice um, you could do it on, you know, for painted rocks. You can do it on just about anything. It doesn't have to be a graduation hat. So again, we're just filling in this area. 
this part is probably the part that takes the longest and is probably the least fun. And I promise you we'll get to the fun part after this. I'm gonna show you um, some fun different ways to paint flowers and they're all abstract flowers. I really like, um, I like to try to keep things simple and doable. Um, so I hope that it's something you guys all like and the flower technique you can, like I said, again, use on just about anything. All right, so I'm getting close to getting done with this outline. And if you guys aren't finished with the outline part when I move on to some of the flowers, don't worry about it because we can go back to it. I just wanted to give you the basics of what we're doing here. Um, and then again, when I'm doing this lower part, I am going to leave a little space in between there. And what I'm going to do later, I'm going to come back with a smaller paintbrush and then we'll go closer to the lines. So this is not about being perfect right now. This is just about getting some white on there. And then I, I don't know if you guys already have quotes that you like for putting on the book later. Um, if you don't have one tonight, that's okay. You could just save that part and come back to it. And I'll show you how I did my lettering. But another thing that I was thinking about today that would look really cool on here is if you didn't want to do a quote or you wanted to add a little something else, you could add something like um, you could put some pictures, some of your maybe like a favorite picture um, from the school year and you could actually glue it right onto the book and kind of make it look like a memory page. So that's one idea. Um, I also have been really loving um, just dried flowers um, or pressed flowers and you could put some pressed spout flowers on there. You can do some, um, I know Michael's has some really cute like butterflies um, and different things if you wanted more of a 3D look on the book. But just to give you guys some other ideas. Okay, so we got this part done. And like I said, don't stress if you're not finished with this part, because I could go on and on just painting this and trying to get it perfect, but we're gonna leave it where it is right about here. And we're gonna go back a little later. Okay. Um, I forgot to mention that you should definitely have some water next to you to wipe your paintbrushes. And then I always have like a big towel um, that I'm using to clean off my brushes. So I am just cleaning my brush right now. And we're gonna go in, I'm gonna take a smaller, um, let's do, we're gonna do the edge of the book right now. So I'm gonna do turquoise. This is where the cover is going to be. And you guys can do whatever color you want. Now I'm just going to go in. And like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. We can always go back in and tighten up the lines later. But I kind of like this look of, I've always liked this look of when I'm painting that, you know, things don't have to look perfect. I actually like it better when it just has a little more, um, I don't know, dimension to it. And it's not so perfectly, you know, perfect lines. And but we can go back in and clean everything up at the end. So we're just adding the book cover. How is this pace? If you guys can let me know in the comments, I just want to make sure I get to some of the fun stuff and get past some of this little outline stuff in the beginning, but let me know if it's going okay for you. So we're gonna do the edge of the book there, and then we're gonna come down here and at the bottom of these pages. And you'll see, just because we're not making that white super solid, you can kind of see that the book is starting to come through. I think you're good on the pace. Okay, good. So I know we had some different colors uh, for the caps. 
I, I really want to see what you guys ended up using. So if you guys are on Instagram, you can um, send me a direct message. I'm just at color made happy, but I'd love to see your finished whatever you finish painting. If it's a cap, if you paint it on paper, and I really would love to share some in my stories with my followers. So um, if you wanna come share with me later when you're done, I would love to see what it looks like. We're adding some here. And then I'm just gonna go up on this side. And like I said, the lines are not perfect and that's okay because we're going to go back in later. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite things later for adding lines. So we'll just finish this part of the book cover. And I would probably, I'll come back later and fill in like some of the areas that are not quite filled. But for now, I'm going to move on. And actually, you can move on with me too, because this stuff is very easy to come back with. I just wanted to make sure we got it down. So there. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to put um, some different flowers up here. I'm going to show you again. The one, I should move this out of the way real quick that I did. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different flowers and um, maybe if you wanna paint them at the same time I'm doing them, or if you wanna see, I'm gonna do like two, three different ones. Um, so if you wanna see how I paint them first and then decide which ones you wanna do, you could do that also. Um, so I'm gonna start first with a sunflower. So like it brush. And if you guys have, like I said, um, I think one of you had a maroon cap, one had royal blue. Think of it this way. You do not have to make things like if I'm putting a sunflower down, make your sunflower in a color that you want it to be on your cap. So maybe it's like a cool light blue sunflower or it's a light pink sunflower. I, I mean, I always like to paint things. I don't paint them realistically all the time. So um, I would just pick I think whatever colors that you want that you think will go well. Uh, what I'm gonna do first is because black is hard to work on um, and we're gonna do a sunflower, I'm gonna do a little white background here. And actually, if you have a dark graduation cap, I would do this as well. Um, it just makes the colors brighter when you add them and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just doing, this is kind of like the center of a sunflower. It's going to make the brown show up better. So I'm just going to start like that. And then I'm going to go in with my brown. So I'm going to show you guys the browns I have. Um, and I'm not sure which ones you're working with, but I'm going to take a little bit of this kind of reddish brown and a dark brown. And it, I like to get just a bunch on my paintbrush. And I wouldn't normally do this necessarily if I'm working on paper um, as much, but you're just going to kind of dot it around like this. I'm just doing a dotting motion. It's going to look messy, but that's okay. So we're kind of just punching it around. And then I like to go back in with different colors of the brown. So I might go in with like a light tan brown and do the same thing again. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. And I think kind of the messier it is, the better. Um, these are supposed to be kind of abstract flowers. So can you hold that part up closer to the camera just so they can see the texture of it? So if you guys can see there, here, I'm gonna hold it and paint a little bit so you can see. And I'll probably go back to this a few times, um, but I am just dabbing to create texture. So you know this middle of the sunflower has all the seeds. So I'm just creating like a bunch of little seeds. And like I said, this is not realistically 
at all, probably, what the sunflower looks like, but this is just how I like to paint it. So that is just kind of the beginning of the texture. And I'm gonna wipe my brush off and we are gonna work on the sunflower um, petals next. So I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm gonna do, I'll start up here first. We're gonna do a stroke. Oops, my paint's a little wet. I'm gonna start this way, hold on. Let me turn it. I'm gonna start up here and I'm just gonna go one stroke down like that and one stroke down on the other side. And then I fill the middle. And when I'm doing my sunflowers, I'm getting a lot of paint. We're gonna like go over these petals probably like, I don't know, six or seven times. So I have a ton of paint. I'll do it close to the camera, a ton of paint on my paintbrush. And we're just, if the paint is coming up and it's raised, that's good. It will give it a lot of dimension. So we're gonna go down like this. And then we're just gonna do the same thing, going all the way around. So like I said, it's not, you know, they're, they're not meant to look perfect. They're look, meant to look a little bit messy, but they all come together in the end. So I really like when I get, you know, a bunch of paint. I'm actually adding like even a little bit of orange to it. So once I get the yellow on, I'll go back with sometimes a little bit of orange. I'm just adding little lines. And you could probably paint the same flower over and over. And it still, you know, you could still keep going on the petals. So we're gonna add that. And sometimes I even go back in and I'm gonna add, I'll add a little bit of white too, but let me get the yellow on there first. I'll go around each one a few more times. Okay, so now that I have the yellow base on there, I'm gonna go in with some orange and a little bit of white. And I actually kind of get them both on my paintbrush together. And I'm just gonna do little lines like this. And if you put some color on there that you do not like, don't worry about it. Acrylic paint is so easy to paint over. So you just add a layer of something else. So I'm adding a little bit of orange. How are the sunflowers coming? Are there any questions or anything you need me to go over? Just let me know. And I'll go back in with a little bit of white too. So that's a good, good starting for our sunflower. And we're gonna do a couple of flowers around it. So one way I really like to do flowers, I'm gonna do a pink one right now, but you guys can do any one that you like. Um, this is just a really easy, messy type of flower, um, but I'm gonna do it up here just so you can see it better. Here, let's scoot this down. So I just start in the center, kind of like this. There's really not much to it. And then I don't clean off my paintbrush. I leave the pink on there and I get a bunch of white on it. And I'm gonna do, they're like little loops around the center of that. And don't worry about it because we're gonna go back in and kind of make it more, a little more flower-like, but it's supposed to be messy like this. I'm doing like lots of white, but it still has a bit of that pink mixed in. And you don't have to make it super solid. Um, if you see, you can see some of the black showing through there. You can keep it, if you wanna have some black showing through, you can have it like that. You can have no black showing through. If you look at my one I did for the example, 
I left it pretty light. Um, so I didn't have a lot of black showing through. This one I'm doing a little bit thicker paint. Um, and then I'm gonna go back in with pink again. And I'm just kind of, here, I'm gonna do it closer to the camera so you can see. I'm just taking my brush and I'm just doing like little loops, just like this. And we're gonna go back in later and we'll add some more details, but it is just a super easy way to do flowers. And you could even come up here if you wanna add a couple of swooshes to the, to the other petals, like that. So that is one way I like to do my flowers. And again, if you have another way that you want to do them, totally go for it. Um, I've, I've seen a million different ways I see people paint, paint flowers. Um, another way is I'm gonna start actually with white because uh, orange doesn't show up that well. Um, so I'm gonna do a little white circle to start. And I think I made my book a lot taller than I did last time because I have less room up here, but that's okay. We're just gonna make the flowers smaller. So I'm gonna start with white because uh, I'm gonna use orange and orange on black just doesn't show up that well. So a lot of times when I'm painting, if I'm painting rocks especially, I always try to have a white base underneath so it makes the colors pop. Um, so for this one, we have the white base. We're gonna do kind of just like little, loops like this. You see that's like a little C. We're gonna come around and I'm just gonna make little C's all the way around. And I'm just gonna actually keep the white underneath because I actually like how that looks right now. So you can see that's just like little C's. And do one on the outside. And if you don't like the white underneath, you could come back in with another color. Um, I'm gonna mix, let's see, I'm gonna do a lighter orange actually. I'll show you what that looks like. You could come in with another lighter orange and put that in there. And then if you decide it gets too light, you can go back again with the dark orange and put more details in. I think I'll add a little bit more. So that's another way to do flowers. I think I'm gonna put, let's see, maybe we'll add some leaves first and then we can put some more flowers in and see what we wanna do. I kind of, just figure out as I go, if you are someone who likes to map it out, you could take your chalk and try to figure out like, you know, you could draw where you think you might wanna put some of the leaves. We're gonna do one right here and maybe one over here. And then we'll go back and put some flowers. So we're gonna do some leaves. So this is how I do leaves. I know there's a ton of different ways, but I get <laughs> a ton of different colors of green on my paintbrush. And we're just gonna do the line up. And it's a little bit harder on a graduation cap than it is on a piece of paper. But we're gonna just do a line and then I like to just do these little, little leaves coming off. And we'll add in more colors of green as we go. But and just get a bunch of paint on your paintbrush to get it started. So if you wanna go in with a darker green, you could go in and add a little details. It's kind of hard to see on black, but there's no like perfect way to do these. I like to just kind of like the flowers, just keep adding a little bit of paint here and there. And we're actually gonna go back in later and we'll add some light with white. I like how that looks on that side. So I'm actually gonna add another one on this side. 
So I'm going to do the line first. And I'll go in with my green and do a little circle on top. And then I'm just going to go one leaf there and a leaf there. And there we go. Actually, I really like this. I think I'm going to erase this one. So there's not a question right now. I just wanted to say this is looking really good. Okay, okay great. <laughs> I'm trying not to put my hand in the wet paint as I'm painting, but it's hard. <laughs> so let's put, I think we're gonna put, I'm gonna put another flower right there. You guys take a look at yours and see where you think your next flower should go. Um, I'm kind of going to keep with the color scheme of the oranges and pinks, um, but you decide what you want to do. I think I'm going to do another circular, circular one. So actually, I'm going to start with a white base because I think it will show up better. So I'm going to add another little white circle here. And I forgot to mention, but if you can, depending on the material of your graduation cap, don't get your paintbrush too wet because I've noticed um, sometimes it just soaks up the paint once you start painting with it um, on these caps. This one's a little bit brighter of a pink, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to do little half circles. like this. And I actually really like it like that. I might add a tiny bit of light pink in here, a little more white. But there's another flower. They're super fast. Once you get used to painting them, you can just go crazy with them. And actually, I feel like the more you put on the page, the cooler they look. Um, so maybe we'll add Add some little yellow ones. Sometimes I just like to add little tiny ones too. So I'm going to put a couple little circles here. And if you want to make yours bigger, you want to make them smaller, do them however you want. I just like to cover a lot of the space. If you need some color ideas, my nails have some they're, the leaves on my nails, actually, I don't think you can see them, but they're blue, all different colors blue. So if you don't want to do green leaves, do blue leaves. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with a little bit of yellow on these. I'm just going to make these little circles. We're going to add details to those later. And if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. They're are really no mistakes. Everything can be turned into something. I'll put those there. And I think I want to add a little bit more greenery to mine. So when you look at yours, look at, you know, kind of the balance of colors. So I see that I only have like a little bit of green going on here. So I think I'm going to add another one of these little vines coming out of here. And if you want to do just a leaf, you can do that too. Um, you can see I have some larger leaves here. So you're just doing one big leaf shape. Uh, but I think for up here, I'm just going to do little, little vines. And like I said, I'm taking a bunch of different greens at once. Um, I'm actually trying to paint this one upside down. So let's see how this one goes. Do a little there, a little there. And probably need to make it a little bit brighter. There we go. And another thing I like to do is like, see this space right here? It feels a little bit bare. Sometimes I take the back of my um, paintbrush and I think I'm just gonna put like a couple little, little dots in there just for fun. And then maybe I'll put a couple up here to fill it too. 
you don't have to do this. It's just a little fun way to fill the space if you feel like it's a little too bare. And I think I'll do a little bit of orange. So the back of the paintbrush always works great. Now here. So we got that area filled and I am gonna turn it and we're just gonna do a little bit more of the same thing. Um, and I want you guys just to get comfortable with painting the flowers. And we're gonna do, I'm gonna do um, sunflower right here. So I'm starting again with my white just because brown does not show up great on this black. So if you have a color that does not show up great, always put white underneath it. It's kind of like a little, little painting secret. Okay, and I'm gonna go in with my brown. I'm just gonna get on there first and I'm kind of just gonna get a base and then I'm gonna do the dotting. And then I'm gonna go in and I'll just put some of those sunflower seeds in. And then this one, we're gonna go all the way around with the yellow. So I'm gonna get, again, I'm gonna loading up my paintbrush and I'm gonna get start here and go one swipe down and another swipe. And then I just keep doing that all the way around. And it doesn't look great at first, but eventually as we fill it in, There we go. And if you guys only have like one color yellow that you're working with, that's fine. You can add um, a little white to it. You can add a little orange to change it up as you go in with your next color. So that's the beginning of it. And now I'm gonna go in, actually this time I'm gonna go in with, I'm gonna mix some white and some yellow together. And so now I got a light yellow on my paintbrush. And now I'm gonna do kind of the same thing before. I'm gonna fill in some of those other areas that were. And I kind of have to load up my paintbrush after every few swipes. You see it's starting to come in. And now I'm going to go back in and this time I'm adding a little bit of orange. And I think I'm going to go back with some more yellow. So you can just keep adding and adding and adding and so you get it to a place that you like it. I'm gonna, I'm just doing a little dotting around that because I didn't like that open area. So it's just blending it and just dotting it like this. And if you aren't like liking where it's at, it's okay, just let go of not liking where it's at and just keep going over it. Um, you kind of got to just work with it until you're liking what you see. I go here, I might even add, can even add like a little bit of brown. Add like a little bit of brown on this one on the inside, you guys can see. I'm all about just having fun with what you're painting, 
I, you know, like I say, I, I just kind of paint things the way I want to see them or the way I think they look cool. Um, not necessarily how I think they look in real life. Um, but I think that that makes painting so much more enjoyable and you let go of that whole fear of, oh, it has to look a certain way or it won't look good unless it looks realistic. Um, I actually like it better when it's just kind of the way you like it. So you might go back in with a little white. Like I said, you can kind of just keep going all over and over. Okay, so done with that one. And this time I'm gonna add some big green leaves on the side. So I'm gonna get my green, a couple of different colors. If your green isn't showing up well, you can um, put white underneath. And I'm gonna do like a big leaf here. I'll show you the outline. That's what mine's gonna look like. Um, I'm just gonna get it filled in. And we'll do a big leaf on this side. And with the leaves, we're gonna come back later and add white. Um, actually, I'm gonna show you guys right now what, what I'm gonna use later. And if you don't have it, that's okay, you can go out and get it um, if you want. But I'm going to use this. It's Dimensional Paint by Tulip. Um, and I love it because it has a really thin top, so it's easy to add little details. So if you look at um, my example one, I go in and add little, little bits of white on the flowers and on the leaves um, using that Dimensional Paint. So. I'm gonna go back later and add that. Um, but if you don't have that, you could also do it with your paintbrush. And I'll show you right now on this leaf. All right, so there's the leaves. And I would take a smaller, if you don't have this dimensional paint, I'm gonna show you first actually with the dimensional paint. You don't have to do this right now. I'm gonna do it at the end too, but the line comes out like, really nice and smooth. So you want to add like a little streak, a little little detail. You can use that, which I absolutely love. Um, and it's also a little bit raised. Or you can go in with a small paintbrush and, you know, just add the same sort of thing. I just think that the dimensional paint is a lot easier to work with when you're adding little details. So that is that area. I think I'm going to add just two really quick flowers here. Let's see. I'm going to put one right here. And maybe like one right here behind the book. And I'll go in with some orange. And sometimes you don't even need to do much. If you look, I'm literally just kind of adding color on top of that white. Um, I'm mixing the orange and the pink. I'm gonna go back in with a little white. We're gonna add some details. Oops, I just put my hand in that leaf. We got some little flowers going on there. Well, let me fix this leaf real quick and then we'll go to the other side, add a few more flowers, and then we'll talk about the center of the book. This is the great thing about acrylic paint. So I just put my hand in this leaf and it doesn't even matter. Let me just go back in. Even the white. We can blend those two. If you don't like the white, you can just blend it right in. All right, so I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna work on the bottom. I'm gonna go back and do one of the first bigger flowers. I'm gonna make it pretty big this time. 
I'm gonna put, actually, oh, start with some orange. Actually, I gotta make it some white in the middle. And I put the orange on top of it. And then I'm going to load up my brush with white. And we're going to just do big, little big petals around this one. I think you'll find if you do these um, type of flowers on anything besides graduation caps, you'll find that they're even easier to paint. This is probably one of the harder materials to paint on. Some big loops there. And then I'm gonna go back with my orange. And I'm just following the outline of the petals I already put there. I'm having mixing the orange and the white. So one thing that we'll do when we go back is we can take that same dimensional paint and you can add, actually I'm gonna add a little bit of brown in there first, hold on. Give it a center. You can go in with the dimensional paint and you can just add little dots for the center. I'll add some here. That's why I really like this paint. Um, I'm gonna do some over here too, so you can see on the other ones. So we'll go back into these and we'll just add a couple little dots, little dots on these center ones. You don't have to, it just, just adds a little bit more, a little more texture. I'm going to add to another flower on this side, and then we'll add some greens. And you guys, if you want to, um, in some of these areas, like if you want to put the year that you're graduating, um, you can leave some of this space blank, um, or if there are different things that you want to maybe put on there. I mean, I actually think this design would look really cool with, um, I saw at Michael's, there's some, um, like I said, 3D butterflies. So I feel like that would look super cute attached to the cap. Um, yeah, let's just get these last few on. Turn these all into little flowers. Here we go with this. And as you can see, I know I keep saying this, but it's like it there's just, it's so easy to make these flowers and they're super abstract, but when you have so many of them together, it kind of just all starts to come together. I'm gonna do orange, or actually I'm gonna do a little bit of yellow on the other ones. And I know I'm going a little faster now, but you guys get the idea and you can come back and spend all the time you want to kind of getting it to exactly what you want. Let me even mix in a little, mix in a little orange. And then this area is pretty bare, so I'm gonna put in a bunch of leaves. We'll do maybe like a little vine coming out here. I think that's one of my favorite greenery to paint is just little vines. They're super easy. They take up a lot of space and they're just really pretty.
And maybe you'll have a vine coming out of here. So I always try to balance it. So if I have a vine coming this way, I have one coming out this way. And it's okay to overlap the flowers. You can even add like a little series of tiny green leaves. That's what I'm gonna do right over here. It's like they're not really even attached to anything. Just little, little floating green leaves. But again, I'm just trying to balance out the space. And then we can go in with the back of paintbrush and add little dots. And I'm gonna add a couple and some other colors over here. And if you guys wanna add a little bit of detail to the middle of the flowers. You can take your paintbrush or you can take this dimensional paint and we can just add a couple little, little fillers. And if you wanna add them, I'm gonna show you on the, add them to some of the leaves, you can do that. Just adds a little bit of something. You can even add a little line. if you want to do it. Actually, I don't think I really like that line. I'm going to blend that out. But that's what I love with that dimensional paint. If you don't like it, it's just like regular paint. You can blend it out. I'm going to blend out the green one. See again, there's just not really any mistakes. You can pretty much fix anything to make it what you want. There we go. I actually like that even better because now it's a little bit lighter. Okay, so last side, I'm gonna do one more. Um, let me show you from the front. I'm gonna do, cause I kind of want to balance it. I'm gonna do one more sunflower, big sunflower over here and one other big flower with it. And then we will get to the book. Okay. So you guys should be all experts at making these sunflowers now. <laughs> I'm gonna start with white in the center. And if you're working on white paper, uh, you don't have to do white, obviously, or light colored paper or a light colored hat um, or material. But because this is black, it's so hard to get the colors to show up. Go in with brown. And I'm just kind of blotting my brush all around there. Make this one a little bigger. And I'm gonna go in with my yellows. Still go in here. There you go. So even if I left the flower like that, it would still look great. But I'm just gonna go in and add a little more. And I'm going to go in with white to just add a little accents. You 
you guys can see like how many times I go in with different colors. You could just keep going and going and going and going. But I know you don't want to watch me what paint the same flower over and over. So I'm going to go a little bit quicker. Okay, so I think that's good enough. I'm just going to add a little bit of leaves. We'll do some big ones on this one. We'll do some big ones here on the side. I think the less you try to make it perfect, the better it is. Um, I know I was always really intimidated by art because I thought it had to be just this perfect, realistic looking thing. And honestly, it, it doesn't, I think. And just having fun with it and no perfect way to do it. Got some leaves in there. You can take the time into these back behind, but I don't think it really needs it. There. Maybe just add a little bit of dark green in there. Oops, that's a little too much. There we go. And I think we'll add little flowers here and then we'll get to the book. There we go. Maybe a little one right here, an orange. A lot of times I don't even wash my brush. If you look at it, there's like pink and orange and white and a little bit of everything. And I'm gonna take the back and we're just gonna add in a little, couple little dots to fill in some of these areas. You could even do them in white if you want. Okay. So we'll turn it back around. Now when you go back through and you're looking at it, if you see any areas that look a little blank, you can leave them like that if you like it and go back in, add a little more. I'm just gonna add a few real quick. right here. Okay, so for the book part. So we went in earlier, we kind of got the base of our book down. What I would go back and do is go back with, what I would do is actually add another layer of paint. I'm not gonna do it just for time's sake, but I would go back through and if you want it a little bit brighter, I would go back through and just add one more layer. If you look, so you can see how much brighter it is. So it just depends on how bright you want those pages to be. And then you would take a smaller brush and you just go back in and you go really as close as you can to the lines and we just fill those in. I'm just gonna do some of them right now because actually I kind of like the book this way. It looks more antiqued. And you would do the same thing on the edges here too. I'm just gonna do that real quick as I go. And then I'm gonna show you how I add the little page details. So we left those lines so you could kind of see where the edges are. Oops, that brush isn't working so well. I'm gonna use a flat brush again. And I'm not gonna do all of them right now. This is something that you guys could do afterwards. I'll just fill in this side right here. Okay, so what I am gonna do is that same dimensional paint that I was using in white, I have it in black. 
And this is what you want to use. This is what you're going to use to do your quote. And this is what you're going to do to do the outlines and details. So um, for the quote, I'll show you mine here. I did it's time for the next chapter. And if you're not great at hand lettering, what I would recommend is look up online at some hand lettering examples. And a lot of times you can find the quote that you want um, already hand lettered. And um, you can look at how they did it. So you're not trying to come up with your own hand lettering design. Um, but what you wanna do is after you let your paint dry, you'll sketch it out with pencil. I'm just gonna do, oops. And it's okay, like if you make a little mistake with your pencil, you can always go back through. Like this. And what you're going to do is you go in with your black. I'm going to do this a little fast. I don't know how it's going to come out this, doing it this fast bit. Oh, one thing with this paint, shake it, make sure it's at the, um, you feel the paint at the edge. And then I always do, I'm going to do it right here. I always do it on a piece of paper first before I start doing it on what I'm actually doing on. But you'll see it's just a really, easy way to do writing, especially on any type of fabric. This paint is actually made for fabric. So you can see it really writes nicely. And then we'll do time too. I'm gonna to sketch it out real quick. What is the name of the paint again? Can you show the bottle? It's Tulip. Um, it's dimensional fabric paint. So it's um, in the aisle where you see, you know, they usually call them like puffy paints. Um, so where you find all the paint that you'd use on fabric or on shirts or on hats. Um, I actually also use it on, um, you can use it on phone cases. I use it on um, mason jars. I mean, you can pretty much use it on just about everything, but it's actually made for fabric. So I like it for projects like this. And I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna hold this up, but it dries, it's dimensional. So it's raised. So you can kind of see there. But, so we're gonna do the whole quote. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how I do it with the pages. I'm just gonna sketch out time real quick. in and it's just and what I would do is if you have this is just practice on a piece of scratch paper and just kind of get the feel for it before you do it on your hat So you see it comes out like that. But then what I wanted to show you was what you're gonna do after you get your whole quote on there is you can go back and all along the edges of the books, you're gonna take this paint and you're gonna go right up against that white. And it's gonna be hard to see on camera, but in person, it's really cool because it's raised. So we're gonna go here and go all the way down. And you're just going to outline like the entire book. And then what's great about this is when it gets to, let me finish outlining this part real quick. And if it gets clogged, what you want to do is don't squeeze it here because it will squirt out into a huge mess. So if you feel it get a little clogged, Go on a scratch piece of paper and get it flowing again. So then when you get to the pages, what I like to do is just do a little, little lines. 
not even, I'm barely even holding it down. I'm gonna do it on the side. Now you can see the book pages start to come out and I'm gonna turn it and we'll do it on the side here. It doesn't have to be perfectly, I actually like it better not to just have like perfectly straight lines all connected. I kind of separate them a little bit. Looks like I missed this line here. And then we'll turn it. You wanna do this absolutely last because it smears so easy if you put your hand in it. We got the lines and I guess I'll add, I left a little bit of space between there. It was probably more than I wanted to, but I was going pretty fast. Um, but that's why I say do it in pencil and make, have an idea of where everything's gonna be. So normally I would do this all in pencil first, make sure the spacing was right, but I'll just get it done here. And I really like the idea of doing the lettering all a little bit different, but you can do it any way you want. And like I said, if you don't want a hand letter in here, you could put some pictures, you could put, um, you can just paint more flowers. You do whatever you want. You could put the year. And then you can go back with this black. Um, actually, I'm gonna go back with the white real quick and just show you. So we'll just add a little bit of details. I think we did it on most of them already. But if you wanna add some in some of the leaves, you can add little, little lines. Oops. Lines there, add a little line here. And you might not want to add any of those, but I like it just for me, it adds a little bit of texture. So that is the hat <laughs> and this, um, that the, the acrylic paint dries really fast, but the dimensional paint, this paint takes a very long time to dry. So you want to leave it for a day to dry if you're using this dimensional paint. Um, but the last thing I wanna show you guys, uh, before I show you the last part, is there any questions? Is there anything I missed or anything you guys want me to review as far as products or things that I used? Um, just let me know in the comments. So I will wait for those questions, but uh, Alexa says it is stunning and looks like a 3D picture. Oh, yay. I'm so glad you like it. And like I said, this design would be so cool on so many different things. And if you guys have seen those wood slices, they're super popular uh, right now for um, doing painting on, but I think something like this would look really cool on a wood slice. So if you have a friend who's graduating too, this would be a really fun design to make for them on something else. Um, so maybe it's not a hat. So maybe you do it on a wood slice or on, um, you know, you can even do it on a canvas. That would be really cool and make a really cool present. So if there are no other questions, Lindsay, maybe we can go to the other view and I will show what you can do for keepsake. I'm going to move this out of the way. So the last thing I want to share with you guys is how to make this into a keepsake. So I got this um, shadow box at Michael's and I so wish that I would have done this and actually decorated my graduation cap when I graduated. Um, but what you can do, I'm just going to put it in there real quick so you can see, is for a little keepsake, you can put it inside, I don't know if that's going to be backwards for you. Um, can put inside a keepsake box. And now you have this really cool memory and about graduation and it makes a great gift. So if you're making this for someone else, that's like such a special way, um, you know, special, such a special gift to give them. So there you go.
that is the class and I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned some techniques that you can use and other stuff. And I'm uh, Color Made Happy on Instagram. I have a blog, coloredmadehappy.com. I have tons of really fun, um, colorful tutorials, like all the stuff that you see behind me. And um, I'm on TikTok as well and Facebook. So come find me. Um, I love chatting with, um, with people that follow me. So if you have any questions, come ask and I'd love to see your hats. So. Thank you, Michaels, for having me.